What is up, YouTube, Supreme Bills family? Welcome to Rojas and Next Levels Beyond the Stream show. I'm getting interviewed today, so let's get with it, guys. Woo. Yeah, gave me the chills just listening. <laughs> oh, man, that's good. Uh, so uh, welcome back, everybody, to another uh, BS show. There's a lot of BS happening here. <laughs> you know what? I know you were looking for it. You're grasping for it. You're trying to figure out what's in Next Level's beard, but Next Level's beard is gone, so you can't even make those jokes no more. It's no. Like, <laughs> the I mean, running you joke. You feel slightly. Uh huh. Feel lighter? I said he's lost the Jesus appeal slightly. I used to call him Canadian Jesus. You yeah. know, it all started from the Supreme Builds group, I think, when you guys started calling me um, Canadian Jesus. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've had this running joke for a while. It's so so next and I have been working together now for two maybe? months for beyond the streams. It's been almost two months. I think since Three months, then. since it's been on my when you first came on my YouTube channel was back in April. <clears throat> maybe May, maybe May, maybe May. So him and me have grown this bond where, where we just start ragging on each other. <laughs> and it was, it's always been, he always has food around him. And I'm just like, dude, I swear you have something hidden in that beard all the freaking time. I think we even called it its own ecosystem at one point. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, we, we had a bet and it was hair for hair, top of my hair versus the the bottom of his head <laughs> <laughs> so i ended up winning <laughs> I, but, I think it was i think that was good because i think you bald would look a lot worse than him without a beard yeah <laughs> <laughs> i would definitely look funny <laughs> but now i don't know I, it's kind of hard i almost feel defeated like i won but at the same time i lost because now i can't say anything about his beard no more <laughs> i thought you were gonna say he looks better now well, you do. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, thanks, uh, Lee, for showing up to our show. Really, it's 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 an honor uh, to have you here. Um, it's I, I think I think this is probably like our first actual time talking to each other. Uh, yeah, I don't think we've actually spoken in person. Just yeah. you know, and so and that's cool. And thank you guys for having me because I, I think what you guys are doing is awesome. Uh, you know, it's nice to see the positivity coming out of the channel. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because, you know, I see how active you've been in so many different aspects with the community. And uh, I was talking to Rojas um, uh, prior earlier today, and I was like, both you and Lee know the same people but you've never had a conversation together. You would have mm -hmm. ran to the same people. You would have had conversations with people in the same circles, but you've never really connected with each other, right? I've had conversations with you, Lee, and I've never been in the same circles that you and Rojas have been in. So I think it, that's pretty interesting that you guys would have um, a pretty good conversation about people that you guys have ran into, maybe even works that, you know, have kind of bounced in between different groups or whatever it may be. Um, I'm pretty excited to have you on here because I know Supreme Builds is definitely one of the sta staples in the streaming community and it has been for a very long time. So I'm pretty happy that you're here and you're on the show. I know I reached out to you probably over a month ago and you're like, man, I'm so busy. Um, you know, I'm not feeling that good. And, you know, the whole COVID thing was going around. It was just so crazy to get time to sit down and actually have a conversation. And uh, I was pretty excited when you reached out to me today and you're like, hey, when's my interview? <laughs> Yeah, because I remember, like, it was like, I'm like, damn, that was like a month ago. And I was like, let me just reach out and see what's up. Because I, yeah. like, Sundays is pretty much the only day now that I don't have work. So I was sitting there on my sofa and I'm like, let me hit up next level and see what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and it's cool because, because next and I were like, we talk just about every day, <laughs> literally just about every day. And, um, so he just hit me up. He's like, dude, are you available right now? Lee. I'm like, wait, what? What's going on? <laughs> I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's super cool to have you here. And um, yeah, it's 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 exactly what Nick said. Like, like you've been around a circle of people. I've been around a circle of people. And, they've, and we know the same circles we've been around for such a long time. Um, XBMC days and and oh, man. So oh, yeah. I'm. 
I'm act, I'm 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 when I got goosebumps right now just with your intro, it's 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 me thinking like the conversation we're about to have, yeah. and also conversations that we've had with other people um, in the past and and with the podcast and with everything. So I think this is going to be a lot of fun. This is going to be really cool. Yeah, it should be fun. I'm excited. I'm glad you guys have me on. So, you know, I'm I'm uh I generally don't do this. Like I have I think I gave an interview to Juggernaut, like when he first started, you know, like I think, but that video is not even up anymore. But yeah. that's because that's my homie. So it's yeah. like, you know, uh, we're we're part of the same squad and whatever. And I'm just like, yeah, sure, you know, like I'll do it. But other people have asked me and I'm just like, no, I'm sorry. But yeah. like you guys are doing something super positive and i checked out the channel and you know i'm just like i'm down for this this is cool i'm i'm with it you know so uh, i'm gonna throw you i'm gonna put you on the spot then sure. which which interviews have you checked out uh i checked out ken's this morning just before we got on yeah um i checked out uh what was the other one i did i think two more damn now you guys you put me on the spot messing yeah. me up because it wasn't today it was a couple days well, ago well, one of the ones that I, I was hoping that you checked out was the butcher no i haven't seen that one yet so you're gonna have to watch that one because that one's pretty good and yeah. i know that the butcher's been around a very long time just like you have right so i think the yeah. the that you could relate to a lot of the things that we talked about in that interview he, he was actually the only other person i did an interview for because i respect him greatly uh i was on his streaming matters when it was like brand new and he just did 100 episodes yeah. yeah, I think I was like I don't know seven or eight or something like that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I like Lee, do you want to tell the good people who you are and uh, a little bit about yourself, and we'll get started? Sure. Um, I mean, I I've been streaming. Well, in the streaming, let me let me say it this way: I've been uh, cord shaving and cord cutting at times, depending. An interesting topic actually um but that's been since maybe i don't know 2013 2014 area somewhere around there i love um, to get time stamps i love time stamps because if you say something i'm gonna ask you how long ago was that what year was that so i love that you're giving us time stamps <laughs> yeah it was it was i want to say 2013 2014 and then i really got heavy into it you know you guys probably know on the channel i'm like the shield dude you know, I'm, I, I'm always doing, I bought, I pre-ordered the very first shield, which came out in 2015 and I waited for it and I got it. And that's really where titanium build was born. Cause you guys probably know I've made that build. Um, and that build has been very, I, I don't want to say it's like, you know, I, I'm never a toot my own horn kind of person. Uh, so I'm not really trying to do that, but the fact of it really is that build when it comes to YouTube, has been so influential for a lot of people's channels. It's over the years, it's kind of crazy. Like I go back and I look at it and like, uh, Hushim did the Titanium Build video. It was the first video he ever had to pass a million views. Yeah. Stephen Cornelius did a Titanium Build video. It's still his highest, most viewed video to this day. Like, um, so, I, you know, it's not about tuning my own horn, but it's something that I, I'm, I'm glad about because I feel like it's helped a lot of YouTubers uh, well, not just YouTubers, yeah. but people in general. Because people too. yeah, sure, and and you stuff, you know, it's been, been great for them. But that's a, I mean, that's a wide varying topic that we could get into if you guys want to get into the build and like uh, box resellers and how I've had to stop them over the years and all kinds of stuff. Well, I know that that I don't know if it was you and I or you've been mentioning it on panels that I was watching or I was in. But you've talked about, you know, the issues with servers in the past, and um, and and even some of going so far back as how the build started was titanium the first build that you created yes um and i created it on the nvidia shield any of you guys that have made a build know that that would be extremely difficult i did it entirely on a shield uh not on a pc at all the whole first version was done on a shield uh it was on that 2015 shield. i was just so excited and wanted to use that shield that i said you know what i'm gonna just make this whole thing on the shield and but how I made did you get there how did you get to the point where you knew how to create one, let alone how to create one on a shield. All right, so I've always been a very techie person to begin with, but um, my buddy, CellX23, who's also part of the Supreme Builds uh, family, and he makes the cell builds uh, in the wizard, 
he put me on actually to streaming boxes. And that was probably in like 2014, like an actual box box. Before that, I was doing stuff on PC, you know, uh, just getting like M3Us and, <laughs> you know, things of that nature. Good back but, then. They were really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, back then you could watch anything you want totally free. It was never buffering. It was great. No, you know, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was amazing, you know. Um, but he he kind of put me on to stream. He had like a Matricom G box, I think, like the very first one. And so I looked at, at that on, his, on the, his box and I'm like, all right, that's pretty awesome. That's cool. You know, and then I said, well, can it run like, you know, Cody or XBMC? And I'm like, yeah, it, it actually can. And I never bought one of those boxes, but because the shield was announced like shortly before then. So the sh that shield in 2015 was actually my very first Android box. I never had a box before that. I did a lot of like Cody on PC, um, you know, things of that nature, but I did not mess with Android boxes. So that's why I'm the shield dude. Like I've literally used shields from the time shield started. I still have 2015 shields here in my house with me. Um, so uh, I, and the reason I made the build on the shield was really just because I was excited to use it. And mm -hmm. I figured, you know, let me see how good this thing really is, what I can do with it. it took forever, but uh, to make, to finish the build, but it was, it was an awesome experience. Um, I, I could say it was so much work. I'd never want to do it again, <laughs> but it was fun in the moment because I was just so excited to have this high powered device that was actually like a legit, you know, it wasn't some Chinese box or whatever, uh, you know? Um, and then, you know, I tried a couple of fire sticks back then. It was like Gen one and they were horrible. And I'm like, yeah, I already had a shield. So I, I was the guy going fire sticks suck right away. Cause I had a shield before I had a fire stick. Right. You know, where most people always say, Oh, I, you know, somebody showed me a fire stick or I got into the fire stick. So, uh, you know, I'm like the opposite. I try to fire stick after because I'm like, I don't want to buy a bunch of $200 devices from my house. Right. Let me try the cheaper device. And then I bought it. But since I already experienced the shield, I was like, no, I definitely don't want to buy any more of these fire sticks. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if, if you would have went with one of the, uh, the the knockoff boxes and then to a fire stick, you probably would have had a different level oh, of appreciation. Absolutely. Um, for sure. But like, where did you gain the knowledge to do what you did with the titanium build on the shield. Like it, if that was the very first build that you made, yeah. how did you even know what you were doing? <laughs> Honestly, I didn't like, I mean, I knew how to install add-ons. I knew how to, you know, um, edit menus. But at that point in time, I mean, I can go into this. This is pretty interesting. Like when I first, first made it, I didn't do anything crazy with it when it came to the menu system or the graphics or any, it was all stock crap that was already in the skin I was using, but I just made the build work well and put in the add-ons I really liked. And people liked the layout of the menu when, when I made it. Um, I think it was Beast who, there was already the Beast build was would, had just come out. And this is how long ago was it? it just come out before I released Titanium. Like it was literally brand new. So it was me and Beast at the time that were like uh, having builds. There wasn't too many popular builds aside from that um, at the at the moment, like extremely popular where people were already talking about them online or things of that nature. Um, and he was using Aeon Knox like everyone else. And I just said, I don't want to do that. Like at the time, Aeon Knox was a very uh, intensive skin. And on, on devices like the Fire Stick, it would bog down. Right. So I went with Zonfluence and it was super quick. Uh, and like I said, I had bought a fire stick to check it out. So I installed it on there and I'm like, it doesn't actually bog down too much. So, you know, this seems to be better. I'm going to just stick with this skin and it still uses Zonfluence to this day. Um, so I wanted to ask, um, when you're building it off of in the shield. So as you know, I, I, I was a user. I was a hardcore user back in XBMC days before it transitioned over. Um, and my first, my first device was I think I spent. Oh, I keep forgetting. It's like it's a hundred and I want to say 150, 200, 200 bucks probably on the first gen. Oh, it's hundred eighty. We talked about it in one of the shows. Hundred eighty. Yeah. It's oh man. And it was a, a high school friend of mine that sold it to me too. I'm like you. 
And, but but what's funny now is he'll ask me like, "Hey, dude, how do you do this?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's gonna cost you." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm trying to get my no, money back. Never <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, so I I. I didn't really get into doing my own builds because I was a titanium user at one point. Um, and I wanted very, very specific stuff. Um, so eventually I, I think, I think that's how a lot of these, a lot of builders come about. They want something slightly different and they don't want to modify somebody else's. So they just, they pretty much make their own builds and then it blows up from there, you know? Yeah. Um, so with mine, I did use uh, the Sonfluent skin, and I I created the simple build. And uh, I remember that. I remember yeah, the name. Simple yeah. build. That one was pretty. It went it went crazy. Like when I first popped it out, there everybody was just like, "Holy crap, this is nice." I'm just like, "Yeah, it's all right." I'm like, "It's not like I'm like it's not like Beast or Titanium." Like I was I was like off of your guys's build. Remember uh, Gears of War? That was another build back then. Um, yeah. So actually, like, no, go ahead. So I based a lot. I, I based the simple build off of several other ones, you know. Um, but the one thing, and I, I think I think this is where Next Level's trying to trying to ask. Um, before I got into the Cody stuff, um, or XBMC, um, I used to do uh, data and reporting analysis. So I used to get into like SQL. I used to get into um, uh, Python and free uh, classic ASP way, way, way back then. <laughs> um, but XMLs is uh, like if you know how to manipulate the XML, there's like no limits to what you can do. Yep. Uh, so when... And, and, and next level has told me this before too. He's just like, Oh, I edit my YouTube video on my phone. And I'm like, but why, how do you do that? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't get it. So when you tell me, Hey, I actually built this on the Nvidia shield. And I'm like, wait, but how do you get into the rooted files? How do you get into the XMLs? How do you get into all of that? crap? <laughs> Cause it's not easy. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, so how did you get into it? <laughs> I, I didn't in actuality, like I went with the original build that I made literally had, it was just my, what I thought would be great to use to watch on a TV. And I just installed the add-ons, um, you know, and set up the menu system and that was it. But like, I, I did it exactly the way Zonfluence would allow. And once I got it off the shield and I saved it, then I loaded it on the PC and started messing with XMLs and later versions. But the very, very first version of Titanium had zero edits to any XMLs, zero background changes, zero anything. I just used stuff that was already there. Just stock. Um, yeah, it was like totally stock. And then um, I met up with a guy, uh, his name is Ron, who ran Team Expat. Oh, that and sounds so familiar. It, he he was a American dude that lived in Mexico, and I he he saw my build and basically he already had a wizard with a team expat build, which was to be honest pretty horrible build. It was terrible, but um, he uh, <laughs> he already had a wizard and I didn't have one. So um, was, he, was he one of the first ones that had those wizards? Yes, because he knew a guy named Adriano. Dude. <laughs> and uh, I think he was an Italian kid. Yeah, he's Italian. <laughs> yeah. And it was Adriano's wizard that Titanium went into first. That was where I, I fir first put it. <laughs> this is um, like, oh my gosh. Okay, so. Yeah, we're going back here. A long we're going way. way back here now. Next is probably like, what the hell are you two Spit talking about? Out, Ross. Spit it out. Come on. Get it off your chest. Come on. Holy, no, I'm excited about this because I haven't heard those names or those, like none of that stuff since way the hell back when. Yeah. When people I mean, didn't have wizards. People didn't, people didn't know how to do the wizards. No. And I learned how to do the wizard manipulating Adriano's wizard myself. Mm -hmm. Like just messing around with it. The first version of supreme builds wizard i ever did was based off of his uh wizard and then of course uh 
um, what is it? The, uh, the wizard everyone uses now. I'm, I'm actually still in that group. There's a group of people that test the, the aftermath. Yeah, wizard. There you go. It's aftermath. now called Open Wizard, I believe. Uh, yes. the new new iteration of it but i've been in that group since the beginning i've been I, i've always been in the background testing that wizard before it came out uh you know after it came out um and it's a small group of people in there maybe i don't know 50 people and i've been in there for years like just you know messing with it and uh i've, I've always been a technical person so i love and that's kind of how i learned to manipulate xml's really i wasn't manipulating them before that mm-hmm. um and it just it's just something that's fun to me, really. So that, that's when I started going, oh, let me change this menu system. Let me put different graphics in, in here, like through the XMLs and link. I, at one point, Titanium, because you remember there was this big thing about file size of builds, yeah. downloads. Yeah. Titanium at one point was like 350 megs because I had all of these pictures inside of it. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I know how to edit the XML. I'm going to put all these pictures up online on a server. Mm-hmm. And XML, I literally edited in the URL to every photo and still made them switch every five seconds based off the URL. Yep. And then the build shrunk down to like 150 megs. Because yeah. I had zero graphics in there aside from like whatever I changed to the menu system itself were actually in the build. So you download it and it would link right away to the photos. I also did the whole, uh, you know, scrolling at the bottom with the, uh, what, what the hell is that called? Oh. Damn, I can't remember anymore. It was so long ago. I want to say like OSS, but it's not called OSS. Like uh, RSS feed. Uh, RSS feed. There you go. Yeah. It's been so long since I even used the RSS feed. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> but I, mean, I did a whole RSS feed. Um, I, you know, I, I basically wanted to make the entire build like online somewhere else, so that it could be downloaded quickly and easily. Um, but it, it, I learned so much in that first you know year of Titanium, um, and then I ended up. You know, people picked it up online and put it on websites and started talking about it and whatever that I ended up creating a Facebook group just to be able to answer questions. And I was answering the same questions over and over and over because nobody would scroll or read the previous questions ever. So that's what led me to YouTube because I said, I'm tired of typing in something that's super long and takes me like 10 minutes to answer, like to go through this whole thing. Um, And even before I started the YouTube, I made a a pinned post that was everything that I thought would answer these questions. People wouldn't even read that. No. So I'm like, let me just make YouTube videos because I can now, if I do that, I'll answer all these questions in a YouTube video and just copy and paste the answer to your question right in there. I had no, no, uh, no, no desires or anything when I started the YouTube to ever blow it up or make it big or anything. It was just a way for me to save time. Like that's what got me to YouTube in the beginning was like, I don't want to keep answering these same questions. Here's a copy paste. Here's your video. Here's the answer to your question. Um, and I was in an interesting position though than most people that started YouTube because Titanium Build was already so big. Right. When I started the YouTube, I had 20,000 followers in like three months. Holy crap. Because people just went, oh, I can get my Titanium answers right here. Follow, fo- you know, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know what to do with that because I'm like, this is way bigger than I thought it would be. I just wanted to answer some questions. And now I got people, you know, writing comments. In content. The video. Yeah, where's your content? I'm like, what content? My content <laughs> was me questions. I have I didn't have any desire to really become like a YouTuber. Right. Um, but I've all I'm also a person that's always uh, I don't know, I guess you could call like in the non- People look at the word hustler and think of like drug dealer, but like in a non in a non bad way, I, you know, not in that way. I've always had a hustler's mentality. Yeah. So when that opportunity presented itself, where I got twenty thousand people that want to hear what I got to say, I said, "Well, let me just do something with this," you know. Um, and you know, my in my desire still even to this day is not first and foremost to make money, but I figured, you know what. I make this build, and a lot of people don't realize. I mean, you guys have both made builds now. Uh, I think not you have, right? I'm not. A, I'm not really a, too much of a Cody guy, but I've okay. used. Well, maybe at one point you made one at some some point. I've made but, APKs, but not uh, okay. not 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 builds. So, even with APKs, you know that like when you're the person that makes them, you're not getting any money for this. No. Really. 
No. You're putting in tons of work and you got to update these builds so often and APKs or whatever, you know, builds I think are even worse no because, worries. you know, there's so many add-ons you put in there. Like, and in the beginning, Titanium used to have like 50 add-ons, mm -hmm. you know, and if one went down, people started complaining because it was in the menu and now the menu is broken and it doesn't work anymore. And now I'm back on the freaking PC going, all right, hold on, let me fix this. There were times where I updated the build like three, four times a week. Um, you know, and it was nuts. And I just said, I make zero money doing all this for people, which in a way I was okay with. But once I started monopolizing my time because so many users were there, yeah. I'm like, I should at least get something to help support myself and my family for all this time. Because if not, I could be doing something else that will help support my family. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's where I started in on, I think I, I was like the first person to block mass downloads of my build by box sellers i don't recall anybody else doing that like with code on yeah. server before me I, I could be wrong maybe somebody did but i don't i don't recall it and that was a whole production in itself because i was there were so many people downloading i had to pay so, for the servers it was on before you get into that lee um you removed all the images from your build and you made it as small as possible and then you had it calling from RS, RSS feeds as well as from, I guess, your own server to put the images in there and swap them out. So can you tell us a little bit about that transition to servers? And I know that you've talked in the past about the amount of traffic that those servers have gotten. So before you get into the box resellers, I yeah. kind of want to hear a little bit about that traffic that the servers were getting. Okay, so it's, it's really nuts. Like, <laughs> Um, I, I was paying for servers that literally were like IPTV grade servers just for people to download builds from the Supreme Build Wizard. That was the only thing on them because it, everything else I tried, I was, the first thing I did was I, I went to seed boxes because I started off on like archive.org, you know, and, and that obviously sucks. And then they started putting blocks into on top of that. Um, and I went to seed boxes and I, I can't remember the name of the company because everybody just talks about ultra seed box now, but it was another big company before ultra seed box seed box co. Yes. That's what it was. Seed box co. Right. They shut me down dude, on all Dude, <laughs> I, I was paying for eight seed boxes on seed box co to put my builds up on there. And you know, they advertise on unlimited bandwidth. They do. Yep. And so I split these the, the same builds on all these seed boxes and they still came in and literally shut them down on me because they were like each and every one of these seed boxes is using so much bandwidth that you need to buy. And they offered to sell me like, you know, you know, whatever, rent me monthly a server. And I was like, you guys are false advertising. I'm not giving you any more money. That's nonsense because yeah. you literally are saying it's. And, I, and I'm willing to pay you for more seed boxes. And I damn well know each seed box isn't on its own server. So you're making money for me. You can't like, you know what I mean? I was yeah. like, it's messed up because now you want to charge me for one server that costs more than all eight of these seed boxes. I was like, I'd rather buy 10 more seed boxes from you before I buy one server at the price you're, up, you're asking me for. So I let it all shut down. And during transition period to server servers, can you give I, us a rough idea about how much those eight seed boxes were costing you on a monthly basis? I think it was 20 euros a month. Per seed box? Per seed box. Wow. Something like that. Or, or 18 euros, somewhere and, in that range. And how long were you running that before you had to change your, your, your setup? I think they let me get away with it for like four months, five months. So four months or five months, you were paying 160 euros a month off of something that you were putting in time but not making any money off of. Correct. You know, um, and from there, once once they shut me down, I started reaching out to people that I knew in the IPTV world and said, you guys have these servers with unlimited bandwidth. Maybe if I can just use one, you know, like I can not have this problem anymore because these servers should be fast and they're dedicated and they're your own server. And uh, I ended up coming upon this company. Damn, I can't remember the name of it now. I, I don't use any of them. I stopped it because I was just wasting tons of money mm -hmm. but i used them for a long time and i had at first i started off with I, I one dedicated server right away but i got iptv speeds but they gave a three i think it was three terabytes a month limit Aww. on the on the server that's nothing 
And yeah, and I'm like, this is not going to hold up. So, but I said, let me see how it works. And it was okay for, to handle the downloads, but I was hitting three terabytes in no time. I'm like, how many people are actually downloading this? So I started putting in stuff behind the scenes now that I have a dedicated server to see like the amount of hits to see, you know, everything just to get. And I was like, dude, I was running out of three terabytes in like a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is crazy. So I went to a 30 terabyte plan and I said, you know, let me try that and see what that's like. And I, I was out of that in almost no time. Mm -hmm. I ended up at the height of it with four full grade IPTV servers that were allowing 300 terabytes a month in bandwidth. And I was having to pay money because they were getting turned off before the month was over to get them back on because they ran out of bandwidth. Wow. I was just like, this is absolutely nuts. And this is costing me literally like $700 a month US. Mm -mm. And I'm getting nothing. And I'm going, what's going on here? This isn't crazy. There can't be this many end users that are downloading this. So when I started monitoring the back end, I was catching IP addresses that were downloading the build a hundred times in like a day. And I said, let me see how I can stop this. So I put in uh, scripts for, for um, uh, what do you call it? Um, what was I using? Jeez, I'm, I'm drawing a lot of blanks today. Sorry, guys. It's all good. Uh, um, uh, it was uh, like SQL and stuff like that. Um, on the back end, it was, it was SQL and PHP, my admin. A uh, combination of those two. I put in scripts that said IP addresses can download up to three times in any 24-hour period, and then it's blocked after that. <laughs> and when I put that in, I shit you guys not, I was getting messages galore. Why is the wizard not working? What's going on? I was like, how many boxes do you sell? That's all I want. <laughs> I'm putting in all this time, all this money, and all this work, and you're making all the money. I was like, it's not fair to me that I have to pay all this money just yeah. so that you can sell boxes and make all this money. So I started charging those people money monthly to remove their IP address from the block list. Um, and it's kind of silly when you think about it because they could have just went ahead and downloaded it once if they really knew what they were doing and took the time to be tech savvy to just load it on the boxes from an SD card. Yeah, it's but, true. You know, or a USB stick, but they had, that was like the thing that told me about how drug does. Yeah, like you're killing me because you don't know what you're doing and you have no, no inclination to learn. Mm -hmm. You just want to make money with the least amount of, learning possible and to me that was like just such a terrible way to do business mm -hmm. so i said if you got if you're not willing to learn then i'm charging you yeah and that worked for a little while but guess what they're so greedy that they just ended up using different builds and i to me i don't care that's fine yeah, go ahead and do something else just get off my server if you yeah. either either you know pay me or go away because yeah. you're you're forcing me to spend all this money because it's you it's not the end user yeah. and i only care about the end user getting the bill well, the end user is paying them. So the end yeah. user is paying. It's just like nobody is keeping alive all this money that you're putting up for the servers. Yep. Right. And, and it, it, you know, it just became to the point where it was detrimental to me, you know, between time and money where I'm like, I could, I, I was spending so much money. I could literally have like bought like an AMG C63 and been driving it around for the price I was paying for server. Like it's, that's just ridiculous. But you know, it's funny hearing hearing this story. Um, I want to say that I can relate to it on a very small scale because even though it sounds silly, my filing store has been shut down five to six times since I've had it, right? And I I remember I moved from Dropbox and then I went to, I went to what is it, Mediafire? Mediafire shut me down in four days because they said I used something stupid like a pentabyte of data in bandwidth. Yeah. And I was like, how did I use a pentabyte of data? So then I reached out to the filing uh, developer and I was like, what's going on with my filing store? Because like how much traffic is it really getting? And he's like, bro, you're getting anywhere between 10,000 to 20,000 hits a day. And then people are going in there and they're not just downloading one APK. They're downloading 10 to 20, which range from 20 to 100 megabytes in file size. So all these servers were like, nope, 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 nope. And they just started shutting me down. So right now... 
I mean, it's, it's relatable to what you said with all the different seed boxes, but I use about five or six different hosts for the same filing store. And I split them all up in different in different hosts and different APKs or linked to different FTPs and different seed boxes. So I can relate to what you're saying to a very small scale it's because so I'm not spending $700 a month. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so frustrating. I mean, and, and mind you, like I was paying, like the 700 was like the normal price. When it ran out of, of, of the, uh, bandwidth, they would tell me, this this server is either down for the rest of the month, or you can pay us another 150, and we'll give you another 10 terabytes for 150. And, <laughs> and you're like, like 10 terabytes will last me until Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like that's gonna get shut down by the end of the day. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I used to have issues where like two servers would be down, and I'd have to go into like my Facebook group and go just do server three or four for the rest of the month, and we'll hope it gets there. Like. You know, and I would only pay once like three and four went down. And I'm like, well, now I have no choice. You know, then I'd pay the, the extra. But it was just absolutely crazy. I mean, I couldn't keep doing it, but I did it for years, you know, like a few years paying this money every month. And I, I, I you know, it just it became something where I honestly was starting to feel a little bit of resentment. And I'm such a positive person uh, that it was bothering me that I was feeling this way. And I said, it's better for me to keep my, my, my heart whole and my soul whole to just yeah. shut this down rather than get angry yeah. about the situation, you know, um, because, you know, I don't like to ever ask anyone for money. But if you're making money off of my work, I have no problem making you pay me for that. Mm -hmm. You know, so like. I guess my next question would be, how did you stay positive to keep it going? Because titanium has been around for four to five years now. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, uh, yeah, I think I started it. The first one was like 2015. Like that was when it came out. Like it was the first release of it. So it's been five years, almost six years. We're almost we're getting close to 2021. Right. Um, I mean, as you guys know, Jugs handles it now. I just yeah. passed the baton to Jugs. So you're, to answer your question, I did it because I got to a point where I said, this makes no sense. If I don't use it anymore myself, I'm not going to advertise it that other people should use. It. I, I, you know, Jug still loves the builds, he does the builds and that's great and people still love to use them, cool. I'm just not that guy. I don't find the point anymore in the builds. I've been making a Gaia build for two years and countless shows on my YouTube channel saying this is how I use Cody now. One add-on, that's it. And you need premium services, otherwise don't bother. <laughs> it, it's not 2015, 2014, 2013 anymore. Right. You can't watch free links at reliably, period. Whether it's live, whether it's a, a movie or a show, you know, it, there's very few free links that last. So you can't make M3Us of links because they go down. I mean, even like the, the, the G video links, they're getting served so fast now. They don't last. They don't stay up. Um, you know, so it, it's to me, it's if you want a cord cut these days, you still got it. Like there was a whole point. You guys remember back in the day, the whole point of Cody is it should be free. Yeah, I'm not paying for anything. And that worked until the box sellers blew it all up. And, you know, if you want to, you know, I still get people that argue with me to this day. I can watch whatever I want for free. Good for you. I can't because I'm way more frustrated trying to, you know, switch a link 42 times to finish watching something live because it starts buffering or you can watch, you might get lucky and you might find something that's cool. And then the main event comes on and something you're trying to watch and all of a sudden, boom, you're done. And that's what you wanted to see anyway. I'd yeah. rather not deal with that, you know, but good. God bless you. If you're the type of person that can switch through 42, 52, 62 links, you know, going through one event, if you want yeah. to do that. You probably hear me say it, but I say it a lot of times, you know, it's a ratio time and money. If you yeah. have the time, you can get it for free for sure. sure. But if well, Last night, last night, I don't mean to cut you there, but yeah. last night, um, so w the, the wife hasn't seen Mulan and I already see, I already saw it through Plex and I was like, cool, let me, you know, let me watch this through Plex, check it out. It looks good. I was at my sister's and it was fine. You know, last night I was like, Hey, let's sit down and watch this. And it, when we tried it on Plex, I'm now I'm watching it on my TV, not on my sister's TV. My sister has a Walmart 4k tv <laughs> you know um mine's not a walmart 4k tv <laughs> mine's a, a, a real 4k tv and so i'm playing it here and it just looks horrible you know 
And I'm just like, why does the quality look so bad? This is, this is, I see 4K on there. Why does it look so bad? And finally, I was just like, you know what? Like, screw this. Went to Disney Plus, paid for the premiere access, and I said, screw it. Because, like, again, like what he said, time and money. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you just, you know, you want to have something that looks really good. And, you know, I, like, I'll say this. I, I bust my ass a lot. You know, I, I work pretty hard with a lot of my stuff. So I'm just like, you know what? If I want to pay the extra premium to, to see this and in, in real life, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and, and i did and and the second the second um we started to watch it with through through the app and everything w- both of us were just like we, we were like silent we didn't even say nothing for like a good solid five minutes and then we had to pause it and we were just like dude this looks insane <laughs> like the surround sound the visual everything was just insane and i know some people are going to be like well like you said, Supreme, uh, like who cares? Who cares if it's, it, I get it for free ev- everywhere. Well, good for you. Like, you yeah, know, I don't, I don't hate on you. If you, you, know, right. good for you. If that's what you want to do, go ahead. Right. Right. Like, right. All right. And I, I think that goes back to what Lee opened with, with the cable shaving versus the cable cutting. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a really weird, like in between person. I, I, I've never actually completely cut the cord. I've had cable this whole time. Oh, but I, I have cable because I'm a very techie person. I don't use their equipment at all. I, the only thing I have from them is the cable cards. I set up HD home runs in my whole house. I, if I, and, and I got a deal where, you know, I have, I have like three separate full apartments in my house on different floors, right? And different people live on every floor. But I have cable through the whole house on one bill. And we split the bill. It's not very expensive for me to have cable. But even with that, you know, like um, when I did, the the only time I had their equipment was when I first moved in here Mm -hmm. into into this house because I bought this house in 2016. And I had seven cable boxes in the house. My bill was like $380 a month or $370 with taxes and everything to have internet and cable. And it was nuts, you know, and I said, that's way too high. Even for three people, uh, you know, splitting that bill, you're paying like $125 a person, like per family. And I'm like, that should be a a cable bill for, for like the whole house, you know? Um, And I ended up like catching Fios when they had deals and things like that. And like renewing my plans to the point where now I don't have a contract with them, but I have, $60 $60 a month off my internet forever. It never expires. And I have $20 a month off my channel, which never expires. So using all my own equipment, my cable bill every month is like $172. And that's split amongst three different people paying that bill. So it's really not that expensive. And I have, for that price, I have every channel. I have Showtime, HBO, Cinema, all of them. So, and I have one gig up and one gig down fiber. So, you know, for, to me, that's worth it. So I keep it. For others, it doesn't work. You know, if you're getting forced to, you know, if you've got data caps and you're forced to pay, you know, crazy amounts of money. But as long as I have that deal, which will never go away, as long as I don't renew a contract, I'll just keep it. Yeah. Uh, but, I, but I still never would pay for like, you know, NFL, uh, you know, Sunday ticket. Like those things are ridiculously expensive, way overpriced. So that's where, you know, IPTV always came in or things of that nature. It was like, I'm going to use it for these things. Yeah, for sure. And you could definitely save by doing some of that stuff and still like even 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 with 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 uh, it's a lot easier with some of the old gen TVs with with, with versus like, you know, I'm, I'm talking about like quality, like how the quality is for me. Quality is everything I, I'm for sure. Uh, Next level. And I have talked about this multiple times um, about like, he, you know, he's like, well, if it looks good, I can see it. Great. Me. I'm just like, nope. I need to see this in 4k <laughs> and the, like, like it just needs to look good. Like, like my vision is slowly getting bad and, and the correction that I use on my glasses is not much, but before I used any type of correction in the Marine Corps, they used to call me Eagle eyes. I used to shoot thousand yards without a scope. And if you told me, Hey, I want you to hit this mole, bam, first shot. I don't, I don't, I didn't miss. And I was just really, really, I, I, I forgot what my vision was, tw- uh, 12, 16 or 12, 14, something ridiculous. Um, 
so now that my eyes are getting now it, the first thing that went is is slowly it was like okay now you have 2020 and i'm just like like damn this sucks you know now they're like oh yeah you're about 22 26 i'm like what the freak is going on here like why am i getting worse <laughs> yeah. and so so for me quality is everything so normally with when i do look at these different live streaming services that's probably the first thing that i look at. i'm like let me pop into one of the channels if it looks great on the tv um because i for one i hate wearing glasses so if i don't have to i won't wear them um so that's why i'm always like that's the first thing i check if if it can handle it if the tv can render it and 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 and, and the quality looks good cool i'll use the service but i i i've i've stuck away from direct tv and spectrum because it, it, it they have they honestly they have a monopoly when it comes to like okay you want to watch football you have to have direct tv i'm in i'm in la you want to watch the, the dodgers then you got to have freaking spectrum you know it's like you have to have all these different services oh and then now they're just like okay well maybe we won't have a monopoly so Okay, if you don't have direct TV, you have to have the NFL um, package or whatever, NFL Sunday ticket. And, and, and like that's the problem. You, you end up paying just as much, if not more, mm -hmm. when you cut the cord if you go 100% legit on services. Like, yeah, you know, it, it's crazy. It, you can't win, you know, unless you go a little underground. Yeah. <laughs> I did want to ask, um, I did want to ask, speaking about underground. Um, what was your first build and what was the first add-on that you used? Oh man. I know. Uh, like, <laughs> the first thing I ever did at, I mean, I like, geez, I'm trying to think cause I'm, going, I'm trying to go back to like XBMC, XBMC. but <laughs> I mean, I can't even remember half the names of things. The one that, I mean, the, the add-on that I remember, uh, that sticks out to me the most because i used it for the longest of time is genesis for sure um Absolutely. you know like that, that worked perfect all the time so long. jeez it was great i mean That's genesis cool. to me is probably the greatest cody add-on of all time um <laughs> for sure you know i mean it's still kind of like forked to this day really i mean yeah. that code still exists in yeah. many other add-ons um i loved uk turks Yep, they're uh, still around actually. I, I heard that, but you need like codes now or something. You need codes now, yeah. They've been yeah. around forever, but they're around. <laughs> and I mean, I, I mean, this is another part of things I a lot of you guys probably don't know so much is like I was around on even on YouTube. Like I said, I was mentioning before, I had no desire to be a YouTuber, but I was on Husham's show all the time, like just as a guest way back then when Titanium was out and things like that with no, no inclination of me wanting to go to YouTube itself. But I loved hanging out with those guys. I was hanging out with, with Target and, uh, you know, all, like um, there was a lot of guys. And, and that's one of the places where I learned skinning to some extent. There was a guy named Dicko the Jordy who used to hang out with us all the time. And I was on Hangouts for hours with, with Omar when he was making mm -hmm. Gears of War build in the background and, and Dicko was teaching him how to like edit the skin and I was watching and then I'd start messing around with uh, titanium skin and um, he was just an amazing skinner. Still to this day, like, I mean, there's a lot of great skinners out there, but some of the custom skins I saw him create from scratch were, were some of the best things I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Like just marvels, of, like he was so good at it. And I think he's just gone in the wind now, mm -hmm. but um, he was- Correct me if I'm wrong, but Rojas, you've touched Gears of War a bit, haven't you? <laughs> yep it was it was a very short period of time where gears was not getting any updates and um omar was like dude like i just need somebody to keep this going like just somebody to help me out blah 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 and um there was a couple times where i did i did talk to to, to georgie about it like how he was doing certain things so that way i could understand how he was doing it and I did take over the Gears of War build for a bit, a good while, <laughs> and said, okay, here you go, do this, do that. And then um, remember when that Gears of War build, um, 
Oh my gosh. So I know you, okay. So it, it's starting to, a lot of this stuff started to connect when you were like, I made these folders instead of all the images coming through here, point somewhere else. Yeah. Not that long after Omar was here, dude, I just figured this thing out where you could point to the pictures. And <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. I thought that was on titanium first. Cause yeah, I remember, was, but, I remember yeah. you talking about it. And then, and, and I remember when some of the, the, the bar with, with how titanium had it, like some of the graphics, he was always finding, he was always trying to find like a step ahead, Yeah, but was always like two steps behind because <laughs> you would always have it first. Cause I, but that's because I was updating like so much. I was constantly updating. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I did, I did have it at one point and, and I did help him out with a couple things and help them create some of the, the super favorites and just, um, yeah, it was, it, it, it was cool. Cause I, I started to learn a lot of the stuff off of that gears of war build. Yeah. And then that's well, when you I, can, about. you can make a build like super simply or like just super complex. It, it's really all about what you want to do. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, that's, that's something that led me to like, I've always been a teacher. I like teaching people things. So that's what kind of led me to, I think that's why I expanded, you know, YouTube and still do it to this day is like, that's my driving force is to say, if I can make something a little easier for someone, then I'll do that. And I have so many interests besides streaming, but like, that's what my channel is. So like, I've tried gaming on my channel. People don't watch, you know, like, it's like, that's not what this channel's for. Why are you doing that? You know, and I'm like, it's my channel. It's for whatever I want to do on it. You don't have to watch it if I'm gaming. It's fine. You know, then I made other channels like trying to do that. But so the one thing I will ask before we end, um, if there's anything that you can tell the people, we normally say if there's anything, any way that you like to end your show, um, what would you like to tell everybody? Um, how would you like to uh, like, you know, how do you end your show? How do you what would like what would you like to say to the people before? we? I want to end the show a little different. Over. I would end my show. Um, and to end the show, I just want to say that I think being here today is a great experience. And I think that what you guys are doing is awesome for the community. And not just the streaming community, I hope that other people tap into your platforms and you know your podcasts and every place that they are, that somebody finds these things and that you guys because everything I've seen so far from the channel is positive. And I think that we just need more of that. So I commend you guys for starting a channel together. And I, I think it's awesome because I, I've spoken about this with other people and um, not many people would do this because you guys are gonna end up with the subscriber count and you're gonna end up with revenue and you're gonna end up with whatever. And you guys are gonna have to work that out. Yeah. And you're going to have to stay positive while you do it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you'll disagree about some stuff, but you guys chose mm -hmm. to go ahead and do that together. You know, and I'd love to do that. Like, like I wish that, that like, I honestly wish that like, I knew you guys were doing this and I probably would have did with you. Like, <laughs> I love that kind of interaction. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it, it's, it's such a, a, a refreshing thing to see in a community, whether it's streaming or just, the United States or the world <laughs> literally so damn negative. Now. Yeah. And, and it, you know, so I thank you guys for doing this and I wish you guys the most success possible going forward. Um, and you know, anything I can ever do to help you guys, let me know. I'd be more than happy to do so. Um, you know, it, I'd love to have you guys come on my show one day, you know, as well and, and chop it up just about anything. Know, maybe take live questions that would be kind of cool uh you know whatever the case is and you guys if you ever do you guys can feel more than free to take my show and put it on your podcast i don't care <laughs> you know, like, it, it, i just think it's very refreshing you know i'm always looking at the community and I, I i definitely commend you guys so thank you for having me on and being a part of what you guys are doing right now mm -hmm. you know and, beyond the streams is really exactly what it is beyond streaming we're all people we all have our own experiences we all have our own um you know things that we go through in our life that we can share and no matter if people find us outside of the streaming community or within the streaming community everything can be relatable 
no matter yeah. what. We're people at the end of the day. We showed that today. Like we went across so many subjects, and we could oh, we could almost always tie it. Even politics, we could tie back to streaming mm -hmm. or YouTube or how. So it's all because of how people act yeah. and how they behave. You know, it's it's human nature and behavior and adapting to make yourself better. Yeah, yeah. So with all that being said, um, I hope we didn't offend anybody. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I know there, there's so many there, there's so many things that we did uh, discuss and we tried not to we're not we're not we're not here to be politically correct on anything. Everybody here has their own opinions on stuff and everybody out there listening has their own opinions on stuff. And that's OK if we can't agree with with two different things. You know, maybe the color is purple. Maybe the color is lavender. I don't know. We're, <laughs> So we don't really care most of the time. That, that picture of that dress back in the day. Oh man. Yeah, back in the day, is it gold or is it blue? <laughs> but you know, with all that being said, wherever you guys are either listening to us in the different platforms or if you are on uh, YouTube watching this live, make sure you guys do leave us comments below because we even even if we don't reply back, we do read every single one of them and we appreciate your guys' feedback. So I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this one. And and Lee, I'm 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 really I, I'm very excited that you were able to come and, and yeah. be here part of the, the beyond the streams. Um, so with all that being said, uh, a couple things that we say here is you guys out there, take care and take care of each other. Stay humble and be patient. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs> Thank you. Out.